Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm gonna go over my complete PSA 10 Marsh Tomp collection. Um, I worked on this for, I'd say about five years, um, give or take. Um, and just recently I finally completed my goal to get a PSA 10 of each and every Marsh Tomp, um, not including unlimited variants, as you'll see uh, in this example. I, if there's a first edition, I got the first edition instead of the unlimited but it's all full on reprints. I also have it a PSA 10, which originally wasn't part of my collection, but I sent them off to PSA because they had them um, and ended up getting the tens of those. So um, here, from here on forth, I will as well uh, collect those. So kind of getting into it. Um, this is the first Marsh Tomp. We'll go chronological from first to most recent. Uh, it's ever be released, the rookie card, um, whatever you want to call it, but it came out in 2003 when the, the Gen 3 games came out. Um, it is by Mitsuhiro Arita. This is a pop three card. I have two of them in my collection. Um, and just a really great kind of base card. Uh, pretty iconic. Um, you get this card in this. Uh, this was one of the hardest ones for me to get because it was so hard to find this card in good condition. Um, I would look on eBay. I had the save searches, but m most of these cards I found were um on Bai or from Japan and I would buy them from Yahoo Auctions or Mercari. Um this one included in that um well I bought this. Um and I graded this one myself. I'll say when I graded one myself or bought it. Uh this one I graded myself. I have two of the three of the pop ten and it's a great way uh to start off the video. Next up from that same deck is the 005 uh, Marsh Tomp, also first edition. This is by Ken Sugimori. Um, it has, it's a pretty iconic uh, Marsh Tomp art, especially the outline. It's been used in a lot of promotional material, etc. cetera. Um, and yeah, really great art, really love the card. Um, it came in the exact same set as the previous one, but um, this was considered the second Marsh Tomp just because of the numbering, this one being 005, while the first being 004. I graded that one myself as well. Um, this one, the 2003 Pokemon Japanese promo Marsh Tomp Shogakukan Elementary in a Gem Mint 10. This is a gorgeous card, um, also by Mitsuhiro Rita. And of course, it being a promo, um, it's just such a great, beautiful card. This actually holds a special meaning to me because it's the very first one I ever got in, uh, of a Marsh Tomp Japanese in PSA 10. And I got this one online from eBay, from eBay auction, from Card Secret. Um, and yeah, not much more to say. This would come inside of a magazine in Japan. Um, unpeeled sheet, um, which I actually own two of. Um, but yeah, really great card. Really love this card. And for the pop for that, it is a pop three card. Next, this is the first set card ever. Um, it's the, also in 2003, so you can tell they're pumping these uh, Marsh Tomp cards out that first year when Gen 3 came out. Uh, but Magraverse Aqua first edition, and this is a, just a really great art. I really love this card. Um, always really have. Um, it's by uh, Atsuko Nishida. Um, I graded this one myself. And not too much to say other than it just says really cool that this is the first set card ever. Um, this pop report for this one is... It's out of order on the PSA website. There it is. Uh, this is a pop two and I have both of them. I should have known that. Next. We have 2005 Pokemon Japanese first edition March out from the Water Quick construction pack. Um, this is kind of like a half deck you could get in Japan that would have this card. Um, I think it came with Mudkips as well, and I think Misty was on the cover of that deck. 
Uh, but this is a really kind of iconic art. It came out in EX Emerald in English. Uh, but yeah, really love this card. And the pop of that card is a two. This next one gave me a lot of trouble getting into PSA 10, which I didn't think it would. Um, the 2005 Japanese promo Marsh Tomp from the Meiji Chocolate. I bought this um, online, the previous one I forgot to mention. I graded myself. Um, this one I bought online for more money than I've liked, because I really thought I was gonna be able to grade this myself. Uh, but these were packaged in the seal wraps and the flap went over in the front and just because of how these have been stored over the past 18 years um, There's usually something on it. So a lot of the cards even if you there's a lot sealed the ones that are sealed If you open them up, they have like indents on it. So it's been it was very hard for me. I graded quite a few of these um, But was not able to get it. So I ended up just buying one it had been on eBay for quite some time um, but I was able to negotiate the price down with seller a little bit and pick up this card to finish off the collection so I was really happy to have that and this is a PSA pop 2 in a 10. Next up we have the 2006 uh, Earth Grotto Marsh Top EX Constructed Starter Deck first edition in a 10. Really beautiful card I've always really loved this one very basic art. This is a pop three card and I have all three in it, which I graded all three myself. Next up is my favorite Marsh Tomp, the Miracle Crystal first edition. This one was the last for me to get my hands on fully because the previous uh, Meiji Marsh Tomp, which was the final one I needed, I guess, overall, um, I needed to get that re-slabbed, but this was the last one I for sure knew I needed. Um, and I just love, have always really, really loved this art. Uh, I just always thought it was really pretty. I've always really loved the Miracle Crystal slash EX Crystal Guardian set. And I graded this myself, and I was just so thrilled to get this in a 10 and kind of seal off the collection. Next up, we have the 2006 Pokemon Japanese Brock's Marsh Tomp. This came in something similar to uh, this packaging uh, for the Manaphy movie um, that came out, the Pokemon Ranger movie. And this I actually graded myself. It was a pop one at the time. Uh, now it's all the way up to a pop nine. So uh, when I graded this as pop one, now it's up to a nine. I think this is probably the highest Japanese card graded in a 10. Um, likely because they were in that Manaphy pack that were that was able to keep it in pretty good condition. And those packs themselves from the Manaphy collection aren't too expensive. I think I got, I actually opened two of them up um, for grading purposes just for this card, which I thought was ridiculous. Um, but I really wanted this card in a 10. Another cool fact about this one is it's the only Marsh Stomp card to date to release only in Japan. So you can only get this card in Japanese. Um, and I've always just really liked it, like Brock in the, uh, down there with the VS and uh, Brock's name up there, Takeshi, um, in Japanese. So I've always really loved this card. And I, this was the first one that I ever graded myself, so um, I've always really loved this card as well. Next up, 2007. Moonlit Pursuit first edition. This is a pop two. I have both of them, which I graded myself. Um, this is from the Diamond and Pearl era. Um, and yeah, I always really love this card. Uh, I just think the colors are cool. It's kind of a more unique art style. Um, a set card, but not a whole lot more to say about that one. Next one is by uh, the art, it's kind of um, familiar, maybe you're familiar with it kind of because the artist has kind of become a bit more popular, I'd say, within the hobby in the past couple years or so, but it's by uh, Tomokazu Kamiya, 
and really beautiful card. I've always really, really loved this one. I bought this one as well from an auction from Card Secret. Um, he grades a lot of old common and uncommons um, that he's kept in really good condition. And yeah, when I saw that he had this auction up a couple years ago now, I was really excited to see it. And I knew I wasn't gonna lose it. Um, but yeah, this is a pop one card. And I've always really loved this one. Next up, Title Storm, first edition from XY. So you notice we went from Diamond and Pearl to um, Gen 4 to Gen 6. So the, the only Gen since March Tom's debut to not have a card is Gen 5 in the Black and White era. Uh, with Scarlet and Violet just starting up um, in Japan. Um, I am really hoping we get another Marsh Tom card in Gen 9. But this is a really beautiful card, a set card. Um, yeah, I always just really love this art. And this was also reprinted into this Premium Champions Pack Gem Mint 10, um, which is a hollow. Might be a little hard to see on camera, but um, I this is a beautiful card. I didn't wasn't trying to get this in a 10, but I had a couple in good condition. I sent this one off and it got the 10s, which I was really happy about. Um, but yeah, I really like this kind of being the only Japanese hollow Marsh Top card. Um, and up until today, I thought it was, it was a pop one, but I just checked while I was checking the pop reports today for this video, it went up to a pop two for a gem in 10. So somebody else out there graded this in a 10. But yeah. Next up. I call this my least favorite Marsh Tomp, even though it's it's a fine card. Uh, but it's kind of a reprint, kind of of that Marsh Tomp. Uh, this is by, by Ken Sugimori. And I wonder if he even had anything to do with this or if they just took his kind of thing and then put it through it on a green background but uh yeah this marsh top pretty lazy um needed it for the collection but yeah from sky splitting charisma gem mint 10 greatest myself and it is a pop two of which i have both next up ev heroes from the sword and shield era so they went from one of my least favorites to just this Really, really cool art for EV heroes. I'm really, all the Pokemon cards nowadays, the commons and uncommons are just getting really, really great art. Um, and this one is no exception, which is why I'm hoping my, my guess, my ultimate goal that I would just love is if you got an art rare card in the, with so many common and uncommon Pokemon out getting those in Scarlet and Violet. Um, I would love if you got an art rare card in Scarlet and Violet era. But this one, I've always just really loved this card. Um, and yeah, I was really excited when this card came out in 2021. And then the final card, nearly the same thing, but this is from the Start Deck 100. Um, the only difference is the number in the bottom, the 094. But yeah, this came out when they came out with 100 decks in Japan. Um, and you'd buy it. So you'd buy a, uh, something called a Start Deck 100, which would just look like a deck, and you'd get one of. Uh, a random deck out of, a, I think it was 101 because they had like a secret deck, but uh, yeah. So this is a reprint of that, great art. Um, pop two and I have both, which I graded myself. And yeah, that is all of the cards in my collection um, in PSA 10 kind of, or I guess in this set overall. Um, I have multiples of quite a few of them, which I've graded myself, but this was a goal I had for a while. Um, a lot of these cards are really difficult to acquire just because Marsh Top is a bit of a more niche Pokemon. Um, and Japanese is becoming more popular, but definitely not as popular as English. Um, so a lot of these I, I had to resort to grading myself and trying to find the best possible uh, copies I could. So from here, um, I have a couple more Marsh Tops I want to add to my collection. I want to complete binder sets of English, Japanese, and Italian of getting every Marsh Tomp variant for each of those. Um, and also just, I collect other cards as well. 
But I, if you did watch this video the whole length, uh, you're a boss and you're a baller. Um, and I really appreciate it. But yeah, basically just for cataloging this, uh, I wanted to film this video because I was just so excited to finish off this major goal I've had of mine getting a PSA 10 of each. Um, and yeah, I hope everyone has a great rest of the day. Peace.